Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to the UK Chamber of Shipping's first ever virtual conference on creating pathways to 2030. Not quite the ambience of our traditional annual dinner, nor indeed, at least here in the UK, the time of day for one, but the excellent turnout of speakers, panel members and about 400 delegates from 30 countries is, I hope, a reflection of the value of today's conference. The focus throughout the day is on the key challenges facing the shipping industry in the short to medium term. The aim is to generate pathways for the next decade, which will enable progress to be measured towards safer and cleaner shipping. We brought together some of the world's top shipping leaders and industry experts to discuss the challenges we will face over the next few years. And also crucially, to identify the opportunities so that we can map out a pathway for the industry. This morning, we'll be honoured to hear from Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal. As we all know, the Princess Royal is a dedicated supporter of all things maritime. We'll also be hearing from the Transport Secretary, Grant Schatz, and the Maritime Minister, Robert Courts. Following this, we'll begin the day's programme with Graham Henderson from Shell and Nico Sackles of Sackles Shipping as our morning keynote speakers. Paddy Rogers will be the moderator for the morning session. We'll then break out into themed sessions when you can choose to join one of the environment, safety, people or technology panels. There will then be a short break before we have the plenary where we'll draw together the themes from the sessions and you can ask questions using the chat function. Following a break for lunch, we'll start our afternoon programme. We're thrilled to have Graham Westgarth, V Group Chairman and UK Chamber Vice President, and Stephen Gordon from Clarkson's to deliver the afternoon keynote addresses. Richard Mead from Lloyd's List will oversee this session. There will then be breakout discussions focused on cruise, ferry, towage, international trade, offshore and offshore wind. After these sessions, the moderators will again report back to the conference when there'll also be an opportunity for Q&A. All the details are in your digital program, together with instructions on how to navigate around the website. Well, it's been quite a remarkable year in so many ways, and I know our president, John Denham, will be speaking next about some of the Chamber's achievements in the last 12 months. But I'd quickly like to thank the team at the Chamber for organizing today's event. We're living in a different world now and we're making the most of technology to engage with our members. I know a lot of hard work has gone into preparing for today and we hope everything runs smoothly and that you all get what you want out of the conference. I must also say a big thank you to all our sponsors. You can see the full list of them on your screen. In such challenging times, I'm delighted that all of you are supporting this great event. Thank you. Shipping is a vitally important industry for the UK, employing nearly 180,000 people and contributing about 20 billion pounds a year to our economy. And as we look ahead, we must also make sure we're giving ourselves the best opportunity to succeed. That is what today is about looking to the future and what we can all achieve by working together. And I hope you have a great day with plenty of interaction. And I'll now hand over to our president, John Denham. Over to you, John. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction, for giving us such a comprehensive overview of the day. We have some wonderful speakers who I'm very much looking forward to hearing from. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the UK Chamber of Shipping's first ever virtual conference. It goes without saying we are living in unprecedented times and we have faced huge challenges over the last 12 months. Not just our industry, but the whole world. COVID-19 has had a devastating impact in the lives of so many, and we must always remember that. But as we emerge from the toughest times, we must look forward. The world doesn't stop. There, is still, there are still plenty of challenges we face and many opportunities to seize. Today's inaugural virtual conference gives us that opportunity to look ahead, to see how we can change the shipping industry for the better, to improve the lives of our seafarers, 
to make shipping a more sustainable and greener industry and to rebuild with confidence. Shipping is an inherently flexible business and it has demonstrated this over the past 12 months. At the Chamber, we have had, had to be just as flexible. Back in March, we implemented new ways of working to ensure we were representing our members' interests to the best of our ability. We've taken advantage of the use of technology to meet our members more regularly, and our engagement with ministers and officials has also dramatically increased. Since March last year, the Chamber has been working tirelessly on behalf of its member, and this greater engagement has resulted in some significant policy wins. We secured financial support for our ferry operators so we could keep vital goods flowing into the country. We also developed new cruise framework documents which have been recognised by the UN as best practice. And we lobbied government to recognise seafarers as key workers. We know that COVID has had a detrimental impact on the well-being of seafarers. And this is why last summer, the Merchant Navy Training Board and the Maritime Charities Group, a coalition of 10 major maritime char charities, joined forces to publish a good practice guide and to design a training course for seafarers on mental health and well-being awareness. Away from the pandemic, we have been tirelessly supporting our members through the Brexit transition process and worked with international partners on environmental issues. Tackling climate change is a top priority for the Chamber. To reach the target set by the IMO, we know we need to act now. Innovation is going to be at the heart of tackling climate change. The government must lead the way and strategically invest in our industry and ensure that the UK remains at the forefront of the green environmental revolution. There is a global innov innovation race with countries competing to develop and deliver green tech to the world's shipping fleet. As a proud maritime nation with expertise across the country, I believe the UK should be leading the way in developing the top technology for tomorrow. We need collaboration across the sector and through Marry UK, we have now the opportunity to start developing technologies of tomorrow. But we must make sure that all actors, government, industry, academia, and entrepreneurs are all working together. With my home city, Glasgow, hosting the International Climate Change Conference, COP26, later this year, we have a great opportunity to get the international shipping community to work alongside government and international organizations to create a pathway to a sustainable future for our sector. And with London Shipping Week also taking place this year, we must get the government to start creating the right business environment right here in the UK to attract more ship owners. As Bob alluded to, today we have some of the world leading shipping experts who will be giving us their opinions, predictions, and laying out their strategies for the year ahead. I want to thank the, all the speakers for giving up their time to join us today. I hope all of you here in this virtual environment enjoy the day and we are keeping our fingers crossed that the technology works. It has been quite a remarkable year, one no one could have predicted, but I'm proud of the role the UK Chamber has played in supporting and delivering for our members. Thank you. Now I'll hand back to Bob. Many thanks, John, and I want to echo what you said. The Chamber's achieved a huge amount over the last 12 months, working closely with and supporting our members. Long may that continue. And now we will hear from Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the UK Chamber of Shipping's first ever virtual conference. This time last year, I was pleased to speak at the annual dinner when 800 guests enjoyed a wonderful evening in London. How long ago that seems now, in so many ways. The world has changed in these last 12 months and we have all had to adapt the way we live and do business. And that is why I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak to you all today. The shipping industry and seafarers around the world have played a key role during the coronavirus. These men and women aboard ships have kept Britain supplied with the food, medicines and goods we have needed throughout the pandemic. I visited the Port of Bristol last summer to see this work at first hand. Freight has continued to flow into the country because of our shipping and maritime key workers. And they should receive 
a great deal of thanks for the role they have played. In normal times, if we knew, we knew what they were, this work often goes unseen and unremarked upon, and the general public don't have to worry about from where their food comes. But this crisis has focused many people's minds on what is important. Ships and the logistical supply chains they support have been critical, and I want to thank the hard-working men and women who have done such a terrific job over the last year in such trying circumstances. All of you here today are only too aware of the difficulties we have all faced over the past 12 months. But as I have said, the importance of shipping, maritime and seafaring must not be underestimated. And the welfare of seafarers must be paramount in everything we do. The men and women who work aboard and on shore must always be our number one priority. Safety should not be an afterthought. There are still too many accidents and incidents at sea, and it is incumbent on us all to strive continuously to improve safety. When a pandemic comes along, we have to adapt the model to keep our key workers afloat and ashore healthy and safe. Companies, ships and crews have suffered from the pandemic, financially, physically and mentally, and we must learn how to avoid the worst aspects of the disruptions caused by this pandemic. As a maritime nation, 95% of our trade is moved by a ship. But as ships are needed to move more and more goods, we must be aware of the impact we are having on the environment. We have seen a great deal of attention on this area over the last few years. As the focus intensifies, Britain is also taking a lead through the International Maritime Organization to harness innovation to drive the development of technologies that could help reduce emissions from ships and ports. So there are huge challenges facing us. But meeting these challenges is important if the shipping and wider maritime industry is to continue to thrive here in the UK. And that is why this conference is so important, mapping out the steps we all need to take to ensure a vibrant and successful UK shipping sector. A huge thank you to Her Royal Highness for taking the time out of her busy diary to record that message for us. As the Princess Royal rightly said, the challenges are huge, but the opportunities are even bigger. And this conference is a vital step as we plot the course towards a more sustainable and successful UK shipping sector. Now I'm delighted to say we will hear from the Transport Secretary Grant Shapps. Good morning and thanks to everyone who's joined us today for the Chamber's first virtual shipping conference. It is of course a different experience to the Chamber Shipping Annual Dinner, which is always such a highlight of the maritime year. And last year was especially notable as the Chamber celebrated 100 years since gaining a royal charter. But little did we know at that time what an extraordinary year it would turn out to be nor the role that this industry would play as 2020 unfolded. We didn't know that very soon Britain would be in lockdown. And when we went into lockdown, that the maritime industry would quite literally be keeping this country afloat, supplying the food and medicine and fuel that the country needed. And when people refer to key workers at the start of this pandemic, I think they were mainly referring to frontline doctors and nurses, but it soon became evident that maritime workers were just as important to our national battle against COVID as the incredible army of NHS staff caring for patients. And those maritime workers have risen just as heroically to the challenges facing them. Not only stepping up and keeping the ports and shipping routes open, but also adapting to new ways of working and making sure staff are safe all the time. So many thanks, my thanks in particular, go to the entire maritime sector, 
for its tireless work, dedication and professionalism throughout this crisis. No matter what challenges you face, you have kept delivering for Britain. Now, while the start of 2021 has been difficult and there are certainly many challenges ahead, such as working together to deliver the safe resumption of global cruise industry, I've also, I'm also absolutely certain that chances to grow and innovate exist. And those are opportunities that I'm confident the UK shipping and maritime sector will seize. Whether it's the immediate benefits that we can realise from trading around the world and not just to Europe but beyond, or long-term opportunities like delivering net zero, I've no doubt that the maritime industry will play its full part in helping us meet all of those challenges. Now, the maritime sector is, of course, by nature, a truly global operating sector worldwide. From our new position in the world, we have an opportunity to look outwards. And shipping is essential to building a strong and more efficient Britain as we look towards the future. Shipping is an industry largely hidden from the public gaze, yet vast in its size and even bigger in its importance. Now, how many people, for example, know that ships carry more than 90% of international trade? Shipping lanes are the arteries of global commerce, and the UK fosters a, its own maritime sector, which harbours a very proud heritage indeed. Now, while battling COVID is our immediate priority, we have much to look forward to, I think, in the months ahead, not least hosting the London International Shipping Week, the Global Maritime Forum, and of course, COP26. Three events which will help define our leading role within the maritime world. So while we roll out our vaccine program in the weeks and the months ahead, I know the maritime sector will continue its fantastic work, continuing to meet the highest possible professional standards and continuing to support the needs of the British people so that together we can beat coronavirus and look forward to a much brighter future. The Secretary of State for Transport there, Grant Shapps. And now we'll hear from the Shipping Minister, Robert Courts. It's a real pleasure to be here with you today. As I reflect on the past year and my first months as Maritime Minister, I continue to be overwhelmed by the extraordinary way that the sector has come together to respond to this crisis. As we battle through another wave of coronavirus, I am enormously grateful to each and every person in the industry and for the role they have played in supporting the nation. My thanks, of course, go to Bob Sanguinetti and the UK Chamber of Shipping for their tireless work on behalf of their members and the maritime sector. In a year marked by so much sorrow and loss, there will, of course, be challenges for all. But when I think about the difficulties that those here have overcome, I cannot help but be optimistic about our future. I'm thinking of the cruise operators who have demonstrated truly heroic efforts. First, working with government to repatriate over 19,000 UK nationals from around the globe, and then voluntarily suspending operations and working on new measures, with the Chamber instrumental in producing guidance. I'm also talking about the service providers who continue to run vital services to our islands, despite the financial and operational challenges presented by an absence of passenger travel. And then there's our international ferry providers, who have ensured the movement of critical freight like food, medicines and now vaccines. Of course, we all remember the global shipping lines who are wrestling with the challenges of the global container surge and naturally the maritime professional services who responded so swiftly in a shifting landscape, reassuring our partners around the world that the UK is the best place to do business. But most of all, I think of the people the unsung heroes praised so fulsomely and so rightly by the Secretary of State in his opening remarks. The thanks of the nation go to our seafarers who have worked night and day to keep us all supplied. Well, it's fair to say our industry has been deeply impacted by the pandemic, and I would like to extend a special thanks to those who have engaged so brilliantly with government on how to overcome the operational impacts and restart when and where and as soon as possible. As Minister for both Maritime and Aviation, I want to be able to open up international travel in a responsible and safe manner as soon as possible. 
I fully appreciate the extraordinary challenges that the cruise sector has faced since the outbreak of the pandemic. The cruise industry has worked hard to identify those ways to reduce the risks of COVID-19 on board and to make cruises safer and more resilient than ever before. I've been hugely impressed by the progress made and by the Chamber and the wider sector's work on an internationally recognised COVID-19 cruise framework. Now we're currently in a national lockdown and restrictions regarding international travel are being strengthened rather than relaxed. I hope you will appreciate and agree that it is vital that we present our case for restart at the right time to ensure it is well received, supported and crucially agreed. But let there be no doubt that I and the department am totally committed to seeing a restart of the UK cruise sector as soon as is safely possible and seeing it flourish again, which it will. And there's a huge amount of dedicated work underway within DFT to progress the roadmap of restart changes. And I'll continue pursuing discussions with colleagues across government on this matter. I would also like to mention all those organisations that have continued to operate in order to keep us safe the Maritime Coast Guard Agency, the RNLI and General Lighthouse Authorities. Naturally, maintaining safety is critical for the continued success and recovery of the maritime sector. The work of Trinity House, the Northern Lighthouse Board and Irish Lights play a vital role in this and they have faced and overcome major trials in the past year. Things like continuing to deliver vital services and ensuring our shipping lanes remain open, clear and safe. The pandemic has, however, resulted in a reduction in the income of light dues, placing increased pressures on the General Lighthouse Fund. Now, I've considered the rate for 2021-2022, and I've made the difficult decision to increase the light dues rate by one penny to 38 and a half pence per net registered tonne. I hope that implementing this change now will prevent the need for larger changes in the future. I would like to thank the Lights Advisory Committee for their advice and constructive input in assisting me to reach that decision. We will continue to review light dues on an annual basis to ensure the general lighthouse authorities are challenged to provide an effective and efficient service delivering safety for all mariners and allowing the industry to thrive. Well, looking at the challenges our industry has faced, you might ask, why do you remain so optimistic? Well, simply put, because of you. In the face of incredible and constant adversity, the industry has responded magnificently. I cannot believe I've been in post almost six months, and I am really eager to get out to meet companies and people and the heroes who kept our country working and our economy alive during the pandemic. And as soon as I can, I absolutely will. Industry and government alike are charting a path out of an incredibly difficult year towards a restart and recovery. Well, I know that continued uncertainty is really difficult. It has been essential to devote resources and attention to fight the current wave of COVID-19. This does not diminish our commitment to recovery or to the Maritime 2050 strategy, and I look forward to working with the sector to build back better, safer and greener. Well, another integral feature of our future planning as a government and as a sector must be reckoning with major changes in our environment. Action on climate cannot wait. I recognise that reducing carbon emissions poses the shipping industry with its own series of particular and rather substantial challenges. But I believe the drive towards clean growth also offers major economic opportunities for any country and industry willing to seize them. Now in November, the Prime Minister introduced his 10 point plan for a green industrial revolution. And Green and Maritime is a core part of this with a £20 million for a new clean maritime demonstration competition. This initiative builds on the vision set out in my department's Clean Maritime Plan. It underlines our commitment to contributing to the decarbonisation of the sector and should act as a springboard, taking Britain's rich heritage in shipbuilding and heavy engineering and helping propel it into the 21st century. The competition will be a key part of government support to the sector in its efforts to decarbonise, laying the groundwork for further cooperation to come and I look forward to continuing to engage with the Chamber and its members on this throughout the Transport Decarbonisation Plan and beyond. The opportunities to lead in this sector are clear, and shipbuilding and its supply chain offer the chance to help fuel the government's ambition to level up across all nations and regions of the country, spreading economic opportunity to all and supporting our recovery from COVID-19. 
Early in the pandemic, the UK convened a summit with 15 world governments to get seafarers recognised as key workers. I must again thank you, the industry, for driving forward that agenda and working around the clock to aid the repatriation of crews and passengers alike through these toughest of months. I am really proud that the UK has one of the most toughest competitive maritime sectors in the world and I am keen that we maintain this position. So I recognise in order to do so, we are going to have to redouble our efforts as a government and industry to increase our seafaring numbers and to ensure that we have the diverse and highly trained workforce to deliver on our ambitions. As we explore new opportunities in reviewing the tonnage tax scheme, we have an opportunity to create new high quality jobs and investment into the UK to attract new business, to support existing business and to stimulate substantial growth in a market sector in which the UK has real strengths. The training requirement and the support we provide for training is an integral part of the scheme and we need to ensure it delivers for the individual and for the companies. We need to support the businesses who provide these training opportunities to ensure to continue to grow UK seafarer numbers and to ensure they have the highest level of qualifications and skills to support the sector now and in the future. So in conclusion, the future holds challenges, but I really believe that there are significant opportunities for the UK too. As the Secretary of State mentioned, we have a year of events to help us showcase the incredible feats and ambitious goals of the UK maritime industry. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you all at the London International Shipping Week, the Global Maritime Forum and COP26. This last year has made it abundantly clear that we can and we will triumph in the face of adversity and that we can and we will keep working towards building a robust and globally competitive maritime sector. Thank you all here today for being a key part of Britain's bright maritime future. An excellent overview there of the opportunities ahead for all of us and the importance the government places on the UK shipping sector. I would also like to place on record our thanks to Minister Quartz and his team for their great support over recent months. And we look forward to further strengthening the relationship between his department and the chamber over the coming weeks and months. Now I'm delighted to introduce our moderator, Paddy Rogers, who will be overseeing the keynote speeches from Dr. Graham Henderson, OBE, and Nicholas Sackos. Paddy is extremely well known across the UK and indeed the international shipping community. As most of you will know, before he took up his current post as Director, Royal Museums at Greenwich, Paddy had a highly successful career at Euronav. In his nearly 20 years as CEO there, he saw Euronav grow significantly to become one of the largest international shipping companies in the world. Passionate about maritime affairs, he has always been interested in safety, quality and the environment. I can think of no one better placed or qualified than Paddy to oversee today's conference. As we move over to Paddy, this changeover may take a few seconds, so please bear with us and Paddy will be with you very shortly. Thank you very much and enjoy the conference.